Hi, today we're going to take a look at the question, does hot water freeze faster than cold water? Now that's very different from the statement, can hot water freeze faster than cold water? I have a few friends of mine who claim that hot water freezes faster than cold water. Now what's so great about this little test is that it can be done in your own home. You just have water, some containers, a timer, and a uh, infrared thermometer. So let's, gonna, let's get right into the test. I did this, I did this test 10 times and uh, I think I was able to, set, well obviously satisfied myself. Okay, we're gonna put this thing to the test. There's boiling water there. I have two Pyrex containers, two cups in each. I have my infrared thermometer, and I have a timer. Okay, we have two cups of each. Now what this I found out about this is that this water cools off very quickly. It went down okay. from 212 degrees down to degrees 170 on in water. less than 30, 40 seconds. So it's really kind of me. I actually thought it was past the limits of my thermometer until I did this a number of times. And I realized just don't go up that, high. that the uh, water cools down in any event. very quickly. And I think that that's past the limits on the thermometer. But let's go into the freezer. This is sample, the hot sample, let's put the timer right there. Okay, we're 31 minutes in. As you can see, I wrote cold on that one and hot on this one with a marker. degrees Fahrenheit. This one's dropping pretty quickly. Oh shoot, this one's down to 40. Okay. 46 minutes in. A hot sample showing 77. The cold sample is showing 34. One hour, one minute. A hot sample 64 degrees, the cold sample, 30 degrees. Okay, we are one hour, 16 minutes in. The hot sample, 58 degrees, the cold sample, still 30 degrees. And Starting to form ice on the top. Okay, so we're at one hour thirty-one minutes, and the hot sample is still at fifty-one degrees. But I guess it really doesn't matter what the cold sample is because it's 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 already frozen. Okay, we're all right. I did this, te this test 10 times and I came out with the same results all the time. And, and let's look at it a little bit further. These results that I came out with were so exact that I can say that it's, it's predictable. Not only is it consistent, repeatable, but it's also predictable. And I feel that if I did this a hundred times or even a thousand times this test the same way I'm going to come up with the same results now if I was able to if I were to plot these results on a graph these dots would be on the exact same the dots would be right on top of each other and the lines would be identical because of the and I think I did this quite accurately okay I did this again oh, we're doing it again 
that means that this stuff cools off real quickly. That's when that's 170. This one's showing 44 and 47. I two sets of uh, samples. They left it in the refrigerator, so it's cold water. And we got this. We're gonna, and I switched now we're gonna them get around. This going. You never know. One side of the freezer may be colder than the other. All right, we're at 45 minutes. Cold sample is 31. Hot sample is 72. Let's see what's going on over here. We're not going to uh, look at it from the outside. 32, 62. All right, we got an hour, hour and two minutes in. Cold sample is 31. Hot sample is 52. This one, just for yucks, is 31. And this one's 53. So it really doesn't matter volume. Interesting. All right, we're one hour and the Gatorade container is 15 minutes, here, they're really seven, 30 degrees there, seven ounces, as opposed to the 16 ounces. 28, 41, 28, huh? 28 one degrees, what does that mean? Hours. Here's the 90 Cold minutes. Sample. Remember that. 29 degrees, and it's already ice. Just like again. the last time, it's already ice. We proved it again. Cold water for freezes that. faster than the hot water. This cold sample's frozen. Okay, 90 minutes. He's already, that cold he's already sample frozen is at frozen. an hour and a half. Not frozen solid. But this one here is not frozen at all at an hour and a half. Yeah, it's, it's cold now. He's at 30 degrees. Look so at the he's shape of the up. container. All right, an hour and 45 minutes. Well, it doesn't matter. This one is... Well frozen. This one is not even frozen yet. Let's go to the smaller samples. This is an hour and 45. This is not frozen. This is not frozen. That's the hot sample. That's not frozen. Cold sample is frozen. All right, we're an hour and a half in. I did it again. I wanted want to check it out. I did again. this test again. This is the one that I did with the closed Cold system. sample. Not 100% frozen, but there's ice everywhere. The hot sample, the hot sample is not frozen at all. Okay, it's pretty obvious that hot water does not freeze faster than cold water. Now, can hot water freeze faster than cold water? I suppose. I never read anywhere, and I read about 10 of these studies. Eight out of 10 of them said what I thought was the magic word, which said that it's not consistent or repeatable. Now, a friend of mine, and I've used that term lightly, told me that it is scientific fact. Now, for something to be scientific fact, those of us who paid attention in seventh grade science class, we know that there's a process called the scientific method. So I went on, uh, looked it up. Wikipedia gave me a 26-page report on how something would be considered scientific fact through the scientific method. The scientific method is a body of techniques for investigating phenomena, acquiring new knowledge, or correcting and integrating previous knowledge to be turned be termed scientific, a method of inquiry must be based on empirical and measurable evidence subject to specific principles of reasoning. Now this goes all the way back to the 17th century in England. Now, the next paragraph, it says, scientific researchers propose hypotheses as explanations of, th of phenomena. Now, someone could be trying to uh, prove Mpemba. In design, experimental studies to test these hypotheses versus predictions, which can be derived from them. These steps must be repeatable to guard against mistake or confusion in any particular experimenter. All right, this is 26 pages long. And if I was trying to prove Mpemba, I would stop at the second paragraph because it's not repeatable. It keeps saying that in all the studies that I see, it's not repeatable. So. Um, we can say that it is not scientific fact. I spoke with a, a chemist, and he likened this Mpemba to parlor magic. 
So again, let's look up what to see the definition of parlor magic, and this is from the Encyclopedia of Magic and Magicians. The phrase parlor magic is often used as a pejorative. Now the word pejorative is it means uh, derogatory or connotes negativity. To imply that an effect under discussion is not suitable for professional performance. All right, it's kind of a trick. And let's go into, uh, I was doing some, some more reading on this and I found another study. And this one I thought was pretty good. And it says, the Mapemba effect, why hot water can freeze faster than cold, not does. Now it's done by James Brownridge, radiation safety officer with the State University of New York. James Brownridge has been studying the effect in his spare time for the last decade, carrying out hundreds of experiments, and now says that he has evidence that supercooling is involved. Okay, supercooling, then he talks about impurities and all this other stuff. Takes two water samples and places them in a freezer. He found that one would usually freeze faster than the other one. He's able to trick it a little bit. He also says that hot water cools faster because of the difference in temperature. Okay, we obviously, I proved that one many, many times over. He also says that all the conditions must be controlled, such as location of the samples in the freezer in the type of container that he said other researchers have not done. Interesting. It was dubbed the Mapemba effect in the 1960s when schoolboy Ernesto Mapemba from Tanzania claimed in his science class that ice cream would freeze faster if it was heated first before putting in the freezer. Well, my friends, ice cream is not water, so I don't see how you can really uh, equate water to ice cream. All right, let's go to this uh, an interesting little study, and a friend of mine claims that this is the scientific fact. Now, the Missouri State University, if you want to look it up, you can, you can uh, you know, freeze my little video and look it up right there. It's pretty interesting. And uh, these kids do a relatively nice job of explaining what it is. All right, let's get right into it. He said the magic word, hot water freezes faster than cold water, which we've already proved that it doesn't. Now they're going to do this test, and I mimic this test as best as I could. Okay, he tells, tells that it's a closed system. Now I did it with a closed and open system. After an hour and a half of freezing, the hot water bottle here seems to be slightly more frozen than the cold water bottle. Um, it just appears to have more ice and less liquid in it than the cold water, as Kyle will show you. Maybe a little difficult to see on camera, but as you can see, there's more crystallization in the hot water than there is the cold water. All right, when I did this, this test, I did it both with a closed system and an open system. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, the water disfigures the Gatorade container. Now these containers are a cold container. It's not a hot container. So it's not meant for hot water to be put in it. Now what I did was I poured boiling water into this container. I covered it immediately. So what was happening is that you get condensation and the water is, was, was boiling and it's putting off steam and so it really filled up the volume of this container. But once it froze, it sucked it down because you're losing the volume and it, it stays in that, in that uh, configuration. Now the kids did a, a nice job explaining it but I got different results than they did. After an hour and a half, their cold water wasn't even frozen. Mine was frozen. And their hot water was frozen. So a reasonable person could say that it's not the temperature of the freezer, because that, that could vary. But their hot water, their hot sample was frozen more than their cold sample. Mine was clearly the opposite. My cold sample was frozen much more than their hot sample. And theirs wasn't disfigured at all. So, uh, you know, nice kids, did a nice job. They're probably first or second year uh, engineering students, but 
I think that their results are suspect and they kind of changed their results to fit what they were trying to prove and someone needs to have a talk with them about falsifying the results of their experiment. All right, that's it. Pretty obvious. Can happen. Pretty small. If uh, an insurer in nature, I didn't read anywhere that says that it does happen, but I'd say that millions of times a day, cold water freezes faster than hot water. So even if it does happen once, which I kind of doubt that it would, one in a million is 99.9999999%. That's pretty close to 100% to me. So uh, for anyone to say that hot water freezes faster than cold water, it's just wrong. Possible, very minute probability. That's all, folks. Have a great day.